Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at one of the best distros if you're a beginner coming to Linux. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and like what the channel's doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. First thing I want to do is I want to pull up web browser here and go over a couple of the distros I think that are good for beginners. Starting off, we have Ubuntu. Ubuntu has been around forever. It's got a solid base. Some of the issues I have with Ubuntu, if you're a beginner, when you first install it, you have to go download additional drivers if you might need them or additional audio and video codecs. That could be a problem if you're new to Linux and you don't really know your way around the terminal. That could probably stump you a little bit. So, and then there's Linux Mint. Linux Mint for years has been the go-to if you're new to Linux. Just plug it in. The codecs are there. Everything you need to run is out of the box, and it makes things really simple. There's also Zorin OS is an alternative to Windows and Mac. It's got a real Windows-type feel to it. it. makes you feel comfortable and right at home with the desktop environment. Then you also have Elementary OS. It's got more of a a Mac OS type feel with the dock at the bottom, and it makes things pretty easy too, but it's kind of limited. They're kind of creating their own little ecosystem. So if you do download applications that aren't part of the embedded elementary OS, they don't quite fit sometimes. Then there's also Linux Lite. This runs really well on new and older hardware. It's pretty simple. At the same time, if you're new, it could be a little daunting to use it. Even though it is a light distribution, it's not as comfortable as, say, like a Linux Mint or a Zorin. Manjaro, personally my favorite. I run Manjaro KDE as my daily driver. Have now for four years, but I did start on Linux Mint before I moved to Manjaro. So if you get into Manjaro and you get it installed, you got to kind of do some searching to kind of help you out with smaller things. And of course, Peppermint OS, which is based on El Ubuntu. When I spoke with one of the developers earlier, they're going to be moving that base to Debian, which is solid. It's got a great community, easy to get help if you need to get things fixed. One of the things that has always bothered me, especially with Debian and Debian-based distros, if you're using it on newer hardware, you're going to have some issues sometimes. When I tried to use it on my Asus ZenBook 14, keyboard wouldn't work. Now, I know it could probably find a workaround and things like that, but what we're looking for today is simplicity. If you're new to Linux, you're a beginner, and you want to download something and just start using it, I would recommend Linux Mint, Zorin, and probably Manjaro. And if you've got older hardware, Peppermint, Linux Lite, things like that will work perfect for you. But one that has really taken off over the last 18 months to two years, if not a little bit longer, is Pop! OS. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Now, when Pop! OS first starts up, it's going to ask you if you want to install you're going to want to pick your language. Go ahead and pick whatever language you need. Click select and then pick whatever country, then select. And of course, your keyboard input language default. Let's go ahead and select. And then when you get to this page, it's going to say clean install or custom. Just go down here to the bottom left and click try demo mode. Let's slip on over to their website. And when you open their site, this is your page. It's pop.system76.com. I'll be sure to put that link in the description below. But it just basically says, Welcome to Pop! OS, an operating system for STEM and creative professionals who use their computer as a tool. You can streamline your workflow. Development tools work flawlessly. And of course, you can get the hardware that they're creating, which is really nice. Some of the nicest hardware on the market today. Compatible with software tools, other features, gaming, dark mode. Let's click on the dark mode for the website. And it's just got some good basic information here. And if you go back up to the top, you've got laptops, desktops, minis, servers, pop OS. And then of course you can download. Then over here, you've got contact, help, support, and then log in. If you go to support, you can come over here. There's support articles, there's contacts, getting help. You can open a ticket. If you're having problems, you can go in there and open a ticket. It kind of gives you a walkthrough if, before you open a ticket, if you want to try something else. You've got troubleshooting, Right here, bite-sized bugs, audio troubleshooting, data recovery. So you've got a lot of help and assistance right here on their website. Okay. Let's go ahead and scroll back up. And let's go ahead and close out of this. 
Now, the first thing you'll notice is that Pop! OS does have a beautiful desktop. And if you do right click, you can add a new folder, select all, arrange your icons, show desktop and files, open in terminal. You can change the background if you want. Let's go ahead and look at the backgrounds that come with it. And you'll see right off the bat that they have a lot of good looking backgrounds. Cosmic is a cool background if you change it to that. There's Cosmic. They call it Cosmic because they call this the Cosmic Desktop. And then, of course, you have some Pop! OS themed. Let's go ahead and switch to that one. Kind of gives you a nice little animated type look in the background. I'm going to leave that one up for now. Let's go ahead and go back. And while we're in here in the settings, you've got Network. You've got Bluetooth. Desktop. That's where we were just at. Super Action Keys. You can adjust those for the launcher, workspaces, applications. Right now, the Super Key opens the launcher. You got workspaces, applications, show workspace buttons, show application buttons. That's up here. If you don't want to see, like if you click on workspaces, it pulls everything back and shows you all your workspaces. But if you close that back down and come down here, you can show it from that button as well. So if you don't want that one up there, just click on workspaces and it's gone. You've already got it right here. You don't need it twice. And then applications, if you click on that, It'll bring your applications up so you can see what's on the system. Or you can just come down here and click on show applications and they're there. So if you want to get rid of that one, all you'd have to do is flip that and you're good to go. And then you've got date and time here. If this is empty and you've got date and time here, if you want to, you can just slide that over to the left. And then you will have click on that. You'll have your notifications and your calendar right there. And then, of course, your power options and everything on the panel over here. Backgrounds we already looked at. Appearance. You got light mode. You can switch light, dark, however you want to do it. And then you've got your dock, enabling the dock, disabling the dock. And then things you want to do down here, you can adjust that. Typical settings. And then your workspaces, dynamic workspaces, fixed number of workspaces. You can come and adjust this pretty easily to how you want it set up. So let's go back. Notifications, applications, privacy, online accounts. If you want to come in here and put in your Googles, your Next Clouds, Microsoft, Microsoft Exchange. And what's really nice is whatever account you put in here, if you go over here and open up Geary Mail, it will use those online accounts as reference to what mail accounts you're going to be using. So let's go ahead and close back out of that. Sharing, sound, power, displays, mouse and touchpad. They're real simple settings and real easy if you're new to Linux to get up and going. Quite honestly, you've got Firefox down here. We've already looked at that. Then you've got files. You go over to files. You've got a nice, clean, crisp, fast file manager. You got your usual suspects over here, of course. Then you got your home folders here. If you want to make them home folders a little bigger, just click on that. Bump it up. It goes up to 100. And you've got your videos, starred, home. You've got everything here. It's like any other file manager you used on any other operating system. So let's close out of that. Then we'll come over here to terminal. Now, if you're a beginning Linux user, you'll start using the terminal slowly but surely. And then you'll find out that you can do a lot of things a lot easier in terminal and you'll start utilizing it. Or maybe you won't. Maybe you're a person that doesn't ever want to have to open the terminal. You just want an operating system that's not spying on you, isn't bloated, and doesn't seem like a pain in the butt to use. So first thing I'm going to do is try to open HTOP. And they don't have HTOP installed, so we will go with top. Now, top is just a little terminal command you can run. It'll show you the resources that are being used by your system. On this virtual instance, I have two gigabytes of RAM issued to it. At rest, with just the terminal open, we're only using 894 megabytes of RAM. So it's lightweight compared to like Windows 11. I had it running on an older laptop last week to do some videos and comparisons and at idle, it was sitting at 2.7 gigabytes. Windows 11 was using almost two more gigabytes just to be open. I didn't have any applications open just for Windows to be at a desktop. It was almost 2.7 gigabytes. Right here in Pop! OS, you're at 894. You've already saved two gigabytes just to be up and running. So that's something else to look at. Close terminal. Okay, I know in Windows and Mac, you have the, the stores that you're going to use. You go in there, you find applications, you download them and put them on your system. But as you and I both know, if you go in there and look for specific applications, they're not there. You have to go to an actual website, find what you need, find for the right operating system, download it. Once it's downloaded, you install it and then go from there. Well, on Pop! OS, you have the Pop! Shop. Okay. 
pretty much every application you're going to download for Pop! OS is going to come from the Pop! Shop. You don't got to do searches. You don't got to do any of that. You open up the Pop! Shop, and right off the bat, it gives you picks, Pop! Picks. You've got Visual Studio Code, Steam, Telegram Desktop, Lutris, Alacrity. Scroll down some more. And then you've got categories, accessories, audio, communication, finance, education, development, games, graphics, internet, video. Let's say you want to start making videos. Let's look up OBS. There's OBS just popped right up. Let's say you want to start editing videos, Caden Live. There's Caden Live. Look at how quick it is, guys. As I'm typing, it pops these things up. It's just great. Let's say you want to use GIMP for image manipulation. There's GIMP right there. I'm trying to think of some other ones you might want to use. VLC Media Player. There's VLC Media Player. You would just come over here, click, and install. And then, of course, all of your updates will show up over here on Installed. You'll see a little red dot pop up. It'll let you know there are updates available. Operating system updates, Firefox, LibreOffice, Popsicle, Vim, things like that. So the Pop Shop is where you're going to get all of your applications. So let's go ahead and close out of this. We've already looked at settings. And then, of course, you can come over here and look at your other applications. Calculator, calendar, files, Gparted, system, Pop Shop. You've got Office. If you're presently using something like Microsoft Office or Microsoft Office Online, LibreOffice is a great suite to have. You just click on it and let's open it up. And when it opens up, you've got Writer, Calc, which is like Excel, Impress, which is like PowerPoint. Then, of course, you've got Drawing, Math Formulas, Base Database. You can download that if you want to. Writer Document, you just click on it, go over into Writer. Okay, this looks familiar up here. It makes things a lot easier for you to do. And then you just come down here and start doing your business. As simple as that. So that's LibreOffice Writer. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Don't save. And then back over, you've got weather, utilities, text editor, things like that. So let's close out of that. And if I remember correctly, you can pop up here. Do not disturb. Nine updates are available. Let's go ahead and close that. So if you're a beginner to Linux and you want to give it a shot, I recommend Pop! OS. It makes things simple. It's got a great desktop environment. It's got the Pop! Shop. So if you need applications and you want to download them, it makes it easy, and it's right there in one central area. And they've got good customer support. You can go over to their website and pretty much get any problem you have answered. So what did you think of Pop! OS? Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, or put in a virtual machine and give it a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and like what the channel's doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next video.